So after having watched the lecture I posted on Blake and Gnosticism in relation to his poem, The Book of Your Eyes, and you can probably see pretty quickly how Ridley Scott's Blade Runner shares some of the same Gnostic motifs as Blake's Book of Your Eyes. And let's first think of the Tyrell Corporation and the character Tyrell. The character Tyrell um, recalls one of Blake's earliest prophetic books, Tyriel, which is about an old tyrannical father. It's obvious that Ridley Scott had this poem in mind in calling Tyrell Tyrell. I say that because this name does not appear in the Philip K. Dick book, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, uh, the book on which the film is based. So Tyrell is like Blake's Urizen. Tyrell is like the Demiurge in the Gnostic myth. You'll recall in my summary of the basic Gnostic myth of the fall and redemption, I talk about the Aldeboath, who was rejected from the realm of the eons. He fell into time and space, and ignorant of his origin, ignorant of his limitations, he created a world of muck and mud, basically, and he created two people to remind him that he was God. Well, Urizen does the same thing in the book of Urizen. He wants to claim himself as superior to the other three Zoas. He wants to claim that he is prior to these other three Zoas, superior to these other three Zoas. And what does he want to create? Well, as the faculty of reason, he likes predictability, he likes monotony, so he wants to create a world that is devoid of conflict, a joy without pain, a solid without fluctuation. But we know that a world without conflict is a dead world, a wasteland. Terrell is essentially the architect of the city of Los Angeles in 2019. It is a city of metal. It is a city of rain. It is a city of bad air. It is a city where the people living there are slowly dying. He's created essentially a wasteland by reducing the world around him to material that he can use for his own personal gain. And when he has drained the earth itself of those materials, what does he do? He imagines colonies in the so-called off-world. And these colonies are worked by the replicants, which he creates as slaves. So the replicants then would be, if we continue this analogy between Blade Runner and the basic tenets of Gnosticism, they would be uh, the inhabitants, the creations, the Adam and Eves of the Demiurge. And essentially they are slaves until one, Roy Batty, uh, rebels against the Demiurge. Uh, in, in this regard, Roy Batty uh, is like any number of Gnostic heroes you find in Gnostic myths who see through the subterfuges of the evil Demiurge and try to break through the surfaces of the fallen world to the light that is beyond space and time. Really, Scott makes clear that Roy Batty is very much a part of the world of William Blake when Roy Batty enters the factory where his eyes were manufactured and confronts Chu, the architect of his eyes, uh, he quotes the following. Fiery the angels rose, and as they rose, deep thunder rolled. Around their shores, indignant, burning with the fires of Orc. So this is a slight misquote of Blake's poem called America, uh, in which this, the passage goes like this. Fiery the angels fell. Deep thunder rolled around their shores, burning with the fires of Orc. Roy Batty likens himself in his misquote to Orc, one of the characters from Blake's personal mythology. Who is Orc? Well, he's described most fully in Blake's poem, America. And in that poem, he's cast as the eternal rebel. Uh, he's likened to Prometheus, say. Uh, someone who questions the status quo reinforced by some divine order seeing that status quo as oppressive and wanting to push through again to a truth and bring the oppressed along with him. Um, in this regard, we see Orc and Roy Batty as akin to the Neo character in The Matrix, for instance, uh, who would qualify very much so as, as the Gnostic savior. Um, going back near Blake's time, 
we can see the Roy Batty figure akin as akin to the creature in Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. If Victor Frankenstein, like Tyrell, like Cork, like Tyrell, is a demiurge, a limited evil demiurge who creates a creature that he cannot properly care for, um, then certainly Roy Batty is that creature. And when he confronts Tyrell and gouges his eyes out, uh, it's, it's very much akin to the creature meeting Victor in Frankenstein. There is no eye gouging, but there is definitely lots of violence in the confrontation. So between Tyrell, the Demiurge, and Roy Batty, the Gnostic rebel, is Rick Deckard, um, the bounty hunter played by Harrison Ford. He is pulled between uh, the world of Gnostic rebellion. By the end of the film, he seems to side with Roy and the world of Tyrell. Um, early in the film, he seems to be a tool of the police, and the police seem to be a tool of Tyrell. Pris, the lover of Roy, at one point in the film says, I think, therefore I am. This is, uh, of course, the famous line from Rene Descartes, cogito ergo sum. And it suggests a basic dualism. Descartes was a dualist. He believed that matter was essentially the same as a machine. And what ultimately separates humans from other animals who are mere machines is the ability to think. And indeed, the ability to think about thinking. I think, therefore, I am cogito ergo sum. Deckard, the very name itself, suggests Descartes, and that points to the dualism of Rick Deckard. Uh, again, pulled between these two worlds, he himself a cog in the vast uh, machine of Tyrell, but also suggesting the possibility of breaking away from his role as a cog and finding an appropriate level of empathy and sympathy and imagination, uh, in particular in his dealings with Rachel. And, and in expressing these traits, he himself seems to express some of the tra traits that we admire most in Roy and that are found to be sorely lacking in Tyrell.